I really could have predicted this, you know. Oh yes, whenever anybody undertakes this sort of huge undertaking, as they often say, then there's always going to be infighting following on. But this particular Royal Association is hitting new heights because seemingly the sisterhood is falling apart. Let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. It's ever nice to have your company today. Hope you're all keeping well, whatever you're doing. And I know it sounds really strange, doesn't it? Because you say to yourself, can't believe these stories, you know, that come out and you think, no, surely not. But I could have predicted this particular story because when you think about it, as I often say, you know, when you get a group of people together, everybody wants to stake claim to the idea. I used to work for a very famous record producer, uh, Mike Stock of Stock Aiken Waterman fame, and he was the main song writer, the genius, the guy that came up with the title, the melody line, the chords, everything. But of course, as soon as it became a hit, everybody wanted a slice of the pie. A lesson I learned early on in this show business life, let me tell you. Interesting to know that this really just simply also affects the likes of the BBC and Royal Circles, because we're talking about that now infamous interview with the former well known as the Duke of York, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, remember? Newsnight. Recently we told you about a book that a lady who was the producer, stroke, um, kind of go-getter, you know, person-getter, whatever you want to call it. We used to call it the guest-getter in news circles. I'm not sure what title it is now, no doubt executive guest-getter. This is a person that pounds all the time until they get the guest to say yes. Sam McAllister allegedly was that person. And then of course the rest of them were invited to Buckingham Palace to undertake that now interview. But the presenter, Emily Maclis, really saw herself as the person that was going to do incredibly well out of this. She got interviewed straight afterwards by the world's media, gloated in fact over the one sort of idea that she was the person who was almost bringing the monarchy down, allegedly. Now, what I find strange was um, Emily had a book out Oh, a few, maybe two, three years ago now, she went on Breakfast TV to say it was going to be turned into a film. Haven't seen anything of that yet. So you can understand why the green flag of jealousy has suddenly come up with uh, Sam McAllister's book called Scoops, all about her time as the producer of the BBC show Newsnight and that Andrew one. Because now apparently that's going to be turned into a film or TV drama. Hemley's also decided to get in on the act via blueprint pictures. You get the picture yourself now. So these two blondes, not natural I might point out, uh, have decided to go head to head with the very same subject. Very strange when you think, doesn't it? But doesn't it really circle back to the story of whichever way you look at it, they were in it for the fame game. Something I told you about from the very start. These people simply want to be famous, attach yourself to somebody who is worldwide famous, get them to slip up on many occasions, ill-advised interviews. I'm not defending Prince Andrew, but what I'm saying is he was very badly advised. I think it would be more fascinating to find another person's uh, sort of storyline to this particular uh, sort of production and how this interview came about. Because again, I would be certain for sure that there would be a separate narrative and perhaps a little coercion as well. Sam recently came to a studio that I'm based in and let's just say um, she kind of loved the limelight. She's popped up on all the daytime TV shows, reveling in the fact that finally she's from behind the desk and now in front of the camera. She's also now left the BBC to pick up even more money from a commercial radio broadcaster. So we won't really hear much up from her again. This is a good reminder in her mind to remind everybody that she was once a force, particularly with her now ex-employers, the BBC. But who will have the ratings winner out of these two books, these two adaptations? I really don't think people are that interested. We know the story. It was a disaster. Let's all just move on. Why Emily and Sam seem to think that the sisterhood could be smashed by them basically not joining up together, but now becoming rivals remains to be seen. As ever, <laughs> these blonde divas will unfold and no doubt unravel before our very eyes. And naturally, I'll be there to tell you the inside scoop. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.